Data Life got itself a timely second season, just one year later after its debut. And I very much enjoyed its first entry in the franchise, and I do hold these titles as one of the best the Harlem genre has to offer. That all being said, the second season is, in my opinion, a disappointment, or more or less a step backwards. Sure, the art style is the same, the animations are decent, and the girls are fun to watch. But the structure and overall story is where the anime underperforms. The show itself fell short from the start of a dozen episodes to only 10. It might be because the animation caught up with the source material, or simply the people who made it didn't really have faith in the show. Luckily, I live in the future, and this winter we got a promising third season. So I guess the second one wasn't the end of it. As I said, Detroit right 2 has some narrative and structural problems. Yeah, you better believe it. Acknowledge. Thank you for saying such kind words. But it does have its positives. There are two elements that save this anime. It makes it enjoyable to watch. The Twin Temple Sisters and Kurumi. Now Kurumi has always been awesome ever since her first appearance. So it was no surprise that giving her a bit more screen time would gradually increase the quality of the show. But when it comes to the Tempest Sisters, it was a wild card, and to be honest, I didn't know what to expect. Always enjoyed female twins, especially in the edgy genre, like Nana and Momo from To Love Ru, or Ako and Rico from the most popular inches anime in the industry. Now I obviously like when girls get close to each other, and the fact that they usually have opposite personalities makes it even more enjoyable to watch. Is that okay? I like getting both versions of the same chick in the same time. It's ingenious fan service if you ask me. And that's exactly the case of the Tempe sisters in Data Life. Yuzuru is the silent type, introvert and feminine, while Kakuya is loud, aggressive and brush. <laughs> Not too bad, Yuzuru. Although I expected as much from my other half. Rebuttal. Much has been learned from our 99 battles. The advantage is clearly mine. Your words are hollow. My future devil side has already shown me the inevitable end. Refute. Your devil side has never been accurate in the slightest. Uh, shut up! It has so worked before! It's just so cute to see them fight over every petty subject, and above all, it is amazing when they try to unmatch each other in appealing to the protagonist. There's no denying. I'm obviously more lively and charming than she is. Seduction. I'm more fully developed. Just say, Kaguya, you drive me wild. Let me give myself to you. Wrong. Kaguya is a poor choice. However, I would strongly recommend me. As always in typical harem fashion, they have taken notice of the main character and have chosen him to decide which one of them is the better woman. Rejoice, perverts, all around the world. Because that means that Yuzuru and Kaguya will act like cats and hit to try to get Shida's approval. You see, they've been fighting for a long time over who is the better version. And since they always ended up in a draw, the Tempest sister decided they needed an outside voice to decide once and for all the winner of their long fought conflict. Shida has a pretty tough job, considering that once he chooses a sister, her counterpart will cease to exist. As a typical optimistic and determined shonen main character he is, Shido decides to pick both sisters by kissing them and stripping their clothes in the process. I've made my decision, and I choose both of you! It's quite a superpower he has. <laughs> All a guy can do is dream. Side note, it's kinda ironic and funny that at the beginning the sisters hated each other to only be inseparable best friends later on in the show. You don't give me those panties back, you're in trouble! We hold grudges, especially when someone throws water on me while yelling that you have a wet t-shirt fetish. In any case, we won't stand for this, do you hear me? It's a crime to defy the Yamai, which means you're gonna have to pay for this! Let's talk about Kurumi. Have I mentioned that I really liked how one of her eyes is yellow and the other one is red? You could say it's another type of fetish. It suddenly gives an exotic look, and it suits our calf Lolita perfectly. Again, I enjoy her personality as much as her body, and she does have good chemistry with our protagonist. She is naughty, dangerous, mysterious, and now we get the chance to see how powerful she actually is. Come out and play, girls! <laughs> oh, 
Could be wrong, but she seems stronger than any other spirits from Shido's entourage. This brings me to my next point. She's not really part of the harem to begin with. Her full power has yet to be tamed. She's more of an anti-hero or renegade per se, which are character traits that I really enjoy. The fact that she's still a state of psychopathic killer really adds to her persona. She's a yandere and that breed is very hard to come by in a harem anime. One last thing, I love how she tries to use her innocence as a sex appeal, making the protagonist pat her on the head and such. Kinda like Toka on the first date with Shido. Maybe this is yet a fetish I'll have to explore. Speaking of Toka, I really don't like her story arc, or if you can even call it that. Or more or less I just found it boring and pointless. It felt like a cheap add-on to Miku's story, to make her little encounter seem more than it was set out to be. This tactic has been implemented with the Tempest Sisters too, having all those ships and AST fights. But there it kinda worked as it was part of the original story. The white haired chick has infiltrated the group from the beginning with an ulterior motive and we're just about to find out which one it was. But now they just try to complicate the narrative to make the end of Miku's romance look epic and connected to the overall subplot. Why couldn't her conversion to pacifism be character driven? It would have been just fine with her learning a lesson on how to treat people fairly. Learning to trust others and overcome her prejudice against her whole gender. Miku is mistrustful and hostile towards men. This adds an extra obstacle for Shido. As for this mission, he will be forced to embrace his feminine side. Okay, ready, let's go. I'm Shiori. Shido, what are you up to? Uh. I'm on a mission. Look over here. That's nice, Shiori. Very good. Now take something off. Make characters generally have a pretty constant history of disguising themselves as women. The anime community calls them traps. From Ash to Naruto, Rito, Kirito, Tomoki, or Nagisa. There's plenty of boys that accidentally broke my heart. But that's a personal story. Anyhow, back to Miku. The culminating part of her story arc should have been when she realizes that there's so much more to gain from collaborating with people instead of just playing with them like property. She learns what friendship is by accepting her emotions together with the protagonist and therefore she falls in love with him. Now what we got is a hollow version of mine and beyond the subject of character development I didn't see the point of Toka being kidnapped and forced to fight some chick with robot wings. Sure, they give a half ass explanation on their motives, but what does the audience get from all this? Well, we get to see Toka badass side, witness a bare minimum amount of action, and have Shido conquer her heart again, teaching her to be human, which is what he did at the beginning of the first season. I thought we were past all this. Why do we learn the same lesson again, but with a premise that makes less sense? It seems like crazy writing and a waste of time on behalf of their characters. During this whole ordeal, we don't learn anything new about Toka, and she certainly does not learn anything herself, as after being brainwashed and turned into a killing machine, she just reverts to who she was before with no memory of the event. Best girl Origami Tobichi got knocked out of the story, and they introduced this new badass member of the AST, only to serve as a mere antagonist to Mana, in a throwaway move to make her relevant to the story. I'm being harsh with the sequel, because I love this anime, and it's awesome but poorly used characters. It's so colorful and full with interesting personalities. Too bad there isn't a clear emphasis on the girls rather than the action. This is why I respect to love Ru. He had the balls to make the whole story character driven, and managed to have like a dozen girls be relevant throughout 40 episodes or more. Action is only there to accentuate the absurdity and danger our protagonist Rito finds himself while trying to enjoy his harem. I guess it isn't fair to compare these two, but I do believe Data Life has the potential to enter the big leagues. It just has to be a bit more focused and take a new direction to get the anime out of this mediocre plot. I give the second season of Data Life a 7 out of 10. On itself, it's not a bad anime and characters do stay true to themselves and the new girls added to the harem 
are interesting and a lot of fun. It just they deserve a better story, and more time should be dedicated to character development rather than pointless action sequences.